strange how-to on a vehicle that we don't own uh, today we are going to be putting an inner tie rod in on this 2004 Chevy Silverado I'll show you what the main symptom is of this as soon as we get in the air but let's go over a couple things real quick first of all this is a big heavy piece of machinery and we don't want to drop it on ourselves it's not one of our little shit boxes so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually jack up on the frame we're gonna get another frame right here and we're gonna pick it up we're gonna put one of our bigger jack stands underneath it and uh first things first let's make sure you're in park set your parking brake let's chalk the back and i'm probably going to chalk the front wheel too just in case because i don't want this thing falling off on me i'm not really ready to limp around everywhere so uh unlike what a lot of people say i'm not unhooking the battery because i'm a rebel that way so let's get the jack into this thing real quick we're going to break all the lug nuts loose before we get it off the ground and Let's just get to it. So real quickly, just to show you, uh, I mean, obviously I already got up in there, good jack stand, but here's the symptom here. That should not do that at all. And just so you can see how bad this one was. And you can hear it. So what we're gonna do, and Alicia's already broken this loose, so we're gonna take this off real quick. And, uh, this is an older truck and she's not the first owner, so a lot of the clips were actually missing. So we're gonna start replacing some of these. I've already taken some of them out for another project, but we're gonna be replacing as many of these as possible and keep our wheel well up. But a lot of this shouldn't need to be touched. We need to get right back in there. So let's finish taking this wheel off. And like I said, make sure you have the truck chalked. So it's not gonna roll around, you're on pretty level ground and stuff, use a jack stand, etc. Practice safe mechanics. Okay, so let's run over real quick what we're gonna do. First things first, we need to get this boot loosened. So most people are gonna have a clip here. This one is missing up here. So be careful when you remove your clip on our tie rod boot. So this is the other one. This one's zip tied on. I've got an extra zip tie, so we're just gonna cut it and remove that. And our boot will be ready to slip off. So the next thing we're gonna do is this jam nut here between the inner and outer tie rod. We're gonna loosen this, okay? Loosen, do not remove, we're gonna loosen it. And we're also gonna loosen this one here. It's not a uh, pinch spindle, so it shouldn't be too hard to get off, that's what she said. But uh, we're gonna loosen this one. If it starts to turn, make sure you get the proper sized wrench on this to hold it and back it up. Let's see if we can get all this removed. It looks to be all the original tie rods on this truck. It had about 15 feet of grime that was just crusted on here and I wire brushed it all off. But it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So again, remove your clips here. We don't have one. We're gonna remove this zip tie. So remove your clip there. We'll have our boot loose. We need to remove this jam nut. Do everything you can not to touch or turn this inner tie rod. We're, we're gonna try to realign this ourselves as close as we can. Loosen, loosen, do not remove. And we'll be right back. Okay. So we got a boot loose. I had to, I hope that my inner tie rod tool will work, but just a cheap Harbor Freight one, so we'll see. But make sure that you back up your inner tie rod here my jam nut came loose but it semi it started unthreading the inner tie rod too so i put it back snug and put a backup wrench on the inner tie rod you can see the hex you might need to really clean yours up this one was covered in grime to back off the jam nut here so we got that done you don't need to back it off much just just enough where it'll turn freely so the next big thing 
was the outer tie rod. Now, I did have an outer tie rod uh, puller, thank God, because that was really in there. And uh, leave the nut on just a little bit loosely, so when this finally pops loose and comes free, your damn tie rod doesn't go straight to space. Doesn't need to hit one of Elon Musk's uh, Falcon 9s up there or anything. So now that we've got this loose, we're going to back up the shaft here and take the nut the rest of the way loose. And that will take us to the next most critical part, which is counting how many times we thread this off to get our alignment as close to spec as it was. Well, as things usually do, everything went wrong. However, not unfixable. My inner tie rod tool set that I got from Harbor Freight was sloppy and obviously spread out and would not remove the inner tie rod. So what I did was a little trick that my daddy has taught me, among other thousand things, is I got my cheater pipe and I put it in the vise. And I squeezed it until my 12 inch crescent wrench would fit into it. It was a tight fit, but uh, got on there and uh, it's a pretty good crescent wrench so it didn't spread or anything. And I got it to come off. And then the next thing that went wrong was that uh, we were delivered the wrong part. Uh, this is a rack and pinion, which is what I ordered and they gave us the inner tie rod for the gearbox steering. So uh, I had to call up the local O'Reilly's and uh, they asked me the same question, is it gearbox or uh, rack and pinion? And that's what I ordered the first time. So me being scared to be wrong uh, with the silly O'Reilly questions, I double checked again and it was a rack and pinion. Went to O'Reilly's and he pulled out both of them. And it looks like for once I was actually right. It is in fact the rack and pinion. They gave us the gearbox driven tie rod. However, we got the new part and it is on torqued to around 80 foot pounds 80 to 85 foot pounds is what these call for and that is on there nice and sturdy my lord you can see how stiff that is <laughs> and uh, we're going to put the boot back on that's the uh, next thing we need to remember to do is putting the boot back on because we can't easily replace that if we make a mistake so we need to remember that we need to zip tie that boot back up on the rack tube itself and then it's about 22 and a quarter turns to put the outer tie rod back on and and uh, that will basically be it for this the hard part was removing all this old stuff that's been on here for pushing 30 years or 20 years now 20 years it's an 04 math is difficult sometimes so that's pretty much going to be the end of it. Uh, like I said, let's not forget to zip tie this on here. We'll do that right now so I don't forget later. And uh, we're going to put our outer tie rod back on here. 22 and a quarter turns, which is what it was when we took it off. Okay, so the torque on the outer tie rod nut is about 4 to 4 foot pounds. The jam nut here is 55. So we did our 22 and a quarter turns in. Our alignment should be pretty dang close. And I'm going to go ahead and cleaned off the Zerk fitting so we can put a little bit more grease on this outer tie rod. It's going to need to replace it eventually. The boot's torn, but the joint itself is still good. So we probably got a little, maybe two or three years into it before we need to replace this. And this truck doesn't get driven that much except to work or just on the weekends. So we're going to <clears throat> make sure this is torqued down. 44, 55 foot-pounds. And we've already zip tied that outer or the inner part of the boot. We need to do the outer part of the boot next. That's kind of it. It's actually a really easy job if you got the right tools and you don't, you know, mash all your skin off your hands. Now that I've double, tripled, and quadruple checked everything, make sure everything's torqued down. Let's go over it again, just to be safe. We torque the inner tie rod back in at 80 plus pounds, about 81, 85. We put our boot back on, both up in there and here. This jam nut, 55 foot-pounds. The nut on the bottom of the outer tie rod, 44 foot-pounds. And I re-greased the outer tie rod. Checked everything, checked under the truck just as a matter of course. 
check the fender wall, put a couple more clips in the fender wall. So this is what it should look like. As in no movement at all. So that's pretty much the end of it. Uh, we're going to put the bolt, or the, the bolt, dear God in heaven. We're going to put the wheel back on, not the rim, the wheel. Rims are in a basketball game and a certain type of job that you get to do when you're an adult. So we're going to put the wheel back on and usual torquing of the wheel down, etc. All that stuff that you should be familiar with doing. And uh, don't forget to tip your waitress. Thanks for watching, everybody. Come on, boss! Come on! Yeah!